The Unaz Pro is an interesting one. Some different Ubiquiti products have showed up in various places along the way too, but nevertheless, the Unaz Pro is finally here. Hello everyone, Alex here from Hostify. If you need fast, reliable cloud hosting for your Unify, UISP, or TP-Link Armada deployments, check out our website at hostify.com and get started from as little as $9 per month. So this is the first public Ubiquiti NAS device that the company has spoken about. Along the way, we have had various leaks, such as the most prominent one in March 2024, where the full datasheet was actually published on Reddit. And this gave us the first glimpse into the hardware design. There was also a smaller NAS device that was visible for a time on the Flex 10 gig Switch product page. However, we're not here to talk about rumors. The UNAS Pro is actually here now. So what is it? Well, as it might be apparent, this shares its chassis and design with the existing UNVR Pro. It also has the same 8 gigabytes of memory and the connectivity is identical too, with one 1 gig RJ45 Ethernet port and one 10 gig SFP Plus port. On the front is a small touchscreen, something we have become very used to over the years. It shows useful information such as IP addresses, MAC addresses, but also some NAS specific things, such as how much space is left and file transfer information. The setup process for the UNAS Pro is super simple. All you need to do is connect up the power, network and navigate to the IP address displayed on screen. Much like other devices, such as the UNVR, the setup process is super simple. Just name the device and you have the choice of logging into an existing Ubiquiti SSO account or you can use it without, which is great. Once logged in, you have the option to restore the UNAS from an existing backup. Next, we have some options for storage protection. For this video, all I have done so far is install one 18 terabyte hard drive. Since this is all I have done so far, the UNAS is recommending to me to add a second hard drive. However, don't worry, later in the video, I will be doing this. What it is saying here is, do I want basic protection or higher protection? And that I definitely should add some more drives. Once set up, the UNAS went ahead and updated its software, which took around five minutes. I was then welcomed into Unify Drive, asked to sign my life away, and we're in. So we fast forward around two to three weeks, and I've been using the UNAS Pro for all my host of our YouTube video projects. So I've been storing the Final Cut Pro bundles on there, all my raw 4K footage, all the thumbnails, and I've been editing at times directly off the Unite Pro, which is quite surprising. I didn't think it would be fast enough to do that. Um, but now we're gonna walk through the setup process for the SMB share, all the different features in the GUI, because it's quite impressive what Ubiquiti has done, really. Um, so as you can see on my laptop here, I've got the UNAS Pro dashboard open with Unified Drive, and it's laid out in a very similar configuration to Unify Network and also Unify Protect. So as you can see on the dashboard, I've got some information here about um, what hard drives I've got installed. So they've got one drive installed so far in bay one, it's 18 terabytes. I've got a little display of the screen. I've got the picture of the UNAS, how much storage I've used so far. So at the moment I've used 2.39 terabytes out of a total 18. Later in a minute, I will install a second 18 terabyte drive to see what happens. But in total, I've got seven bays. It's got six bays free. Um, at the moment, I'm using RJ45. Um, I will move this over to SFP a bit later on too. Um, I've also got information on what version of software I'm using. Um, in my time of using the Unify uh, Drive system so far, there haven't been a software update just yet. Um, so we shall see if there's any updates for that soon. Um, there's also some backup information, which I haven't set up just yet, which I will be doing in a second. Um, you can see down here I've got uh, recent sign-ins, active users, and file services I can set up. Um, down here I've got information about my particular drive. So far, this is I'm the only person using this, so I've only got one personal drive. And it's saying I can set up a snapshot. So we go snapshot schedule. It says click to set up. So I'm going to do 128 snapshots on a schedule daily at 3 a.m. I think. Um, so let's go for that. Alex's drive snapshot settings updated. As it says, this supports 4,096 snapshots across all drives, which is quite good. Um, if we go back to the dashboard here. So I've got snapshots set up, which is good to see. Um, so backups as well. So the UNAS is quite interesting. There's lots of different options for backups. Um, so if we say task name backup one, it says UNAS Pro select data to backup. Let's say the entire system. Um, and I can put it on different places. So if I've got a remote UNAS, I can connect it to another UNAS I've got on the network. One situation I thought of, which would be quite cool, is 
you've got UNAS at home, but then you could also rent some co-location space in a data center and put a UNAS Pro in there as well. And I have everything back up sort of a complete clone of the UNAS you've got at home. So if you have got, if there was a fire or something, you've got at least got some sort of backup. Um, you can also put it on a CIFS or SMB server if you've got one of those, or you can put it on Google Drive. So I'm hoping down the line that Dropbox, iCloud, and OneDrive, and also some other features um, will come to the UNAS at some point, but at the moment it's a pretty good um, option for backing up the storage. There's also a schedule for those backups as well, um, so you can say uh, the schedule's on, it occurs bi-monthly, weekly, or daily, um, and then a particular time, and that time is based on the UNAS's uh, particular local time as well. Um, so yeah, I haven't got any any places to back these up just yet, but I probably will look into doing that at some point. Um, got snapshots as we looked at earlier, so that will make a snapshot of the whole system. Uh, shared links, this is really cool actually. So if you've got some large files like a 4K video you need to share with someone, rather than you uploading it to the internet and then they, they can download it again, why not just copy it to the UNAS, give them a link, which you can have to expire or something, and then you can just download it straight off the, straight off the UNAS, which is really cool. Um, so that's a really nice option. And you can delete these links if you want to, and you can manage the links. So I've got this video here, for example, I made. Um, I can set a expiration. I can copy a QR code or download a QR code, copy that link, and share it with people with a password if I want to as well, which is really, really cool. Uh, there's also some services. So we've got the Ethernet access here, so um, the IP address for the UNAS Pro. Um, SMB is turned on. Time Machine's turned on. NFS, NFS, which is currently unencrypted, um, they will have other options of options in the in the future, and you can encrypt the entire UNAS Pro as well. Um, so you can set a encryption password, you can copy that password and select the drives which are backed up or encrypted with that password. Really, really good stuff there. Um, some nice little simple options. I, on my understanding, I've never used a NAS before. Um, this is pretty basic stuff, and hopefully they will add more advanced stuff in the future. Um, and then we've also got these push notifications, which are fairly standard, really. Lots of different options in there. Uh, control plane, so this is where you go to update the software on the UNAS Pro, much like the UNVR and UDM. Um, you can update the application or the drive itself. There's integrations also for SNMP version 1 and 2, and also version 3. There's also backups, so you can back up the settings on the UNAS Pro to your Ubiquiti SSO account, much like, again, the UDM and UNVR. Storage, this tells you what storage you've got on the system, so at the moment it's healthy, which is good. Uh, I've used 2.4 terabytes out of 18. I've got basically no storage protection as of yet. Um, I haven't even got the option to set up that yet either. Um, and then the one drive I've got in here, in here is a Western Digital Drive, 18 terabytes, um, pretty standard there. This one, I believe, is the um, the one that you be able to sell from the store, and you can back it up pretty easily that way. Uh, console as well, just the name of the device, the time zone, uh, where you want emails to be sent from, and SSH and that sort of good stuff in there, and more push notifications in there too. All files, um, so we have got my files in here, so you can see I've got loads of files on the UNAS Pro, all fairly easy to access. Um, and this isn't the fastest way you can access your files on the UNAS Pro. Um, what you actually recommend is to add the UNAS Pro as an SMB share. So also on the main desktop, you can see I've got some file services. Time Machine is enabled, Windows is also enabled, and so is Mac OS. So for Mac OS, I'm going to copy the URL here, go to my Finder. What you can see here so far is that the UNAS Pro has been automatically discovered, probably using Bonjour. To, it's found on the local network because they're both on the same subnet. Um, but what I'm going to do is show you how to do it manually. So on macOS, you go to Go and then Connect to Server. And then you put the server address in. So I'm going to copy that now. And what it's going to ask for is some details. So my name is Alex Lowe. I'll set up my name in there. The Where you get those details from is, if we cancel that briefly, is you go to Active Users. You can see here I've got my user here, and then go settings, and you can see here the um, personal assignment or the file services is all set up here. So this allows users to log in via SMB connections, um, and you can reset the password. So I'm going to reset the password just to show you what I mean. Apply changes. It doesn't look like you can change the username at all. So that's the username and password. So it's going to log me out. We will go back here, go back to go, connect to server. SMB share, connect, and then you just use the exactly the same password as you used a minute ago. Press connect, 
and you've now got your UNAS Pro on your account. Really, really simple and really quite good as well. So you can see a personal drive, all your files are there, really accessible and you can copy stuff over. In my testing, the UNAS Pro is basically run at line speed. So I've copied stuff from my hardwired iMac over to the UNAS Pro and it's run at basically gigabit speed. Obviously using Wi-Fi, it will be a little bit slower, um, but it, the UNAS Pro performs really, really well. Um, my iMac doesn't have a 10 gig NIC. Um, the UNAS Pro is connected with a one gig ethernet port and it's it's pretty good really. So it's fairly, fairly simple. Next, we're gonna add another 18 terabyte drive and show you what that process looks like. So now the second hard drive is in, what you can see now is that the UNAS has changed some of its messaging. So at the top right hand corner, you can see it says repairing storage. Do not power off the UNAS Pro or remove any disks. System performance may be impacted until this has been completed. And what it's doing is um, basically reformatting the second drive I've just put in. And you can see on the second bay here, disk repairing, do not power off the UNAS. So I guess it would take a little while to sort itself out. Um, if we go to the control plane and have a look at the storage. So let's go settings, control plane, storage here. You can see here it's going to take a day. <laughs> it's going to take a day to sort itself out, but it has detected that we have got storage protection of 18 terabytes. And as we put extra drives in, we will have more options. So you can see here it's already picked up the information and model about the extra driver put in. Um, and yeah, it's going to take about, about 24 hours to sort itself out, which is quite funny. So yeah, once that's done, it will be fully operational. So in conclusion, who is the Ubiquiti UNAS Pro 4? Well, as other people have said online, there isn't a huge amount of advanced features that other NAS users have become accustomed to. I'm thinking things like Docker support for adding applications such as Plex and other types of media software. However, what is very apparent is that this is designed to be very easy to use and just designed for simple file management. And this is perfect for that. Ubiquiti has various advantages over other vendors, such as simple remote access, nice user management, file link sharing, and much more. Also, the price tag that Ubiquiti has gone for here is pretty competitive. It's £456 in the UK or £499 in the US. There aren't many other devices out there that offer a seven base system and that can also be rack mounted. That's gonna do it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Again, if you need fast, reliable cloud hosting for your Unify, URSP or TP-Link Armada deployments, check out our website at hostify.com and get started from as little as $9 per month. My name's Alex and I'll see you again in the next one.